Good morning everyone! Let me know if the video is fine and let's get started. I'm gonna stop the sound in here. Long time no see. First time in 2024. I'm gonna pop out the chat. Hope I can do that. Yeah. Good morning. <clears throat> As I mentioned, I've been sick uh, like last week. Still not 100% recovered, but hey, I can't wait to share something cool with you guys. So I decided maybe I can I can I can manage it. My voice is still a bit distorted, but otherwise, I guess I'm fine. Happy to see you all of you guys. Thank you for coming to this stream and supporting me. So today, <clears throat> just just a heads up, I will be uh, like recreating parts of the Buttermax website, which is like, was pretty. I think made a lot of noise uh, in in the last days, in last month, uh, maybe in the community, and it's pretty well built and pretty cool built. So obviously I will not recreate the whole website because there's, there's so much in there happening. But one nice and really tricky approach that, uh, that's been used there and I really liked and I, I, I think I've never seen uh, this being implemented anywhere else before. So I decided that I'll share. So today is going to be like a case study for the Buttermax website. I don't know any of the developers of the Buttermax. But kudos for them, it's a, well, I mean, one of the best built websites that I've ever seen, honestly. Go check it out. <clears throat> Good morning, everyone, again. All right, I'm going to rearrange the windows. I mean, uh, conscription, probably, at some point. I'm also considering to uh, go there myself voluntarily thinking of my options like what's the best way to help so yeah probably at some point that might or might not change the streaming hope i will still be able to continue streaming but maybe not okay um let's change the windows all right it's been a long time since i've done that like basically a year i believe all right and then i'm gonna create a first template <clears throat> I've got a lot of stuff happening on my desktop, but let's call this one Buttermax, which it is. Okay, I think I... Uh, did I have some Buttermax? Okay, I'm gonna just delete this one. What's in there? Nothing. Right, I'm gonna uh, get my usual template, just so it really starts simple. Yeah, you know, people asking me about that one. It's in Patreon, but it's also like... I mean, the most basic thing that you could ever get with 3.js. All right, let's open it up. Buttermax. Right, almost there. Arranging the window. Uh, well, <laughs> yeah, I guess I like the chat being that big, but maybe it should go to the left. So I'd still be able to see you. Uh, right. I think they have uh, this pin in the arc. No. This window arrangement is just killing me. Because, you know, when two of the windows are in the same application, it just doesn't know which one should go to which location. Yeah. Let's prepare everything. So we do not get bothered later on with all of this. All right. Well, thank you for calling me smart, I guess, because I'm, I'm never sure about that, to be honest, especially while I'm streaming. Well, thank you for supporting me with the buying courses. And also, I, of course, I know that you've been like on a ma major part of my streams. Nice to see you, Angel Perez. I have a question about those interactive particles from open continents. Why did you use the FBO technique instead of the usual rotation of particles and then making them interactive? Well, I mean, uh, to make them interactive, you need, well, if you move them with a shader and you want them to be interactive, you have to implement interactiveness inside shader. 
and the only way to make them interactive with the shader is to actually use the FBO. Otherwise, it's going to be, I mean, you can do that, but it's going to look cheap. It's not going to look cool. So this is the main reason. To make something interactive, if it's being animated with shader, you have to use a uh, frame buffer output technique. <clears throat> Yeah, sure. Maybe I'll do a short about that. But thank, thanks for like pointing that out. So maybe, maybe it, it could be a useful thing. All right. So let's get back to the website because I spend a lot of time. It's it's a really cool one, right? So I mean, there's so many things happening. Honestly, it's uh, it's hard to. I mean, yeah. I mean, if you've been to this website, it's basically one of the coolest built tech websites. I'm not going to change the design in any case. I, I don't really care about that. I'm a tech guy. But technically, there's so many effects happening at the same time. And yet, this is the solid 60 FPS, like on, uh, probably on, 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 on all of the machines, right? I don't think it's, it's slow in any way. So, yeah, it's a pretty cool and well-built website. So... Uh, what I want to build today, I want to showcase this specific animation, like the thing that's happening with these devices and how they implement in these devices. Because uh, basically every website that gets released, I get to dig into the code and sometimes it's like, okay, this is a 3D model, this is, has been on my stream, uh, like, like, there's no, uh, no point in just repeating yourself. But this one, like, I mean, you could see that these models are kind of like, it's a 3D model, right? I mean... I can rotate it with my mouse, it's pretty smooth, it has to be 3D, right? Well, this is not 3D, I don't know if it's a surprise for you, but this is not 3D actually. And there are, I, I think I can think of a bunch of reasons why they did that, but let's first uh, see what this is exactly. <coughs> so first of all, if you go into the network tab, this is the first thing I do, like I'm looking for the 3D models. like. Like my God, this uh, like this rendering is amazing. Like they have like small reflection. The ambient occlusion is happening on these models. Like everything is happening on these models all at once. And this is pretty hard to implement this level of quality rendering on the models, right? So they have like it's either custom shader or I don't know. I don't know. This is this is like a cinema level like of um, rendering, I believe. Anyway, so if you get to dig into the network tab, you will not be able to find any 3D models, but you will be able to find some like weird files. Uh, okay, the new macOS uh, thing annoys me. So you, you'll find something like this, the KTX2 files, which is uh, which are textures, by the way. So all of those models are actually just images, even though they look like a 3D model. So let's, uh, like the easiest way to open those uh, uh, textures is to go to the uh, uh, sandbox babylonjs.com. I mean, probably there are some other viewers, but this one is the, is the first one that I found. So if I just, uh, I mean, I can refresh it. So it's just an empty page. And if you just drag, uh, like, let's say the diffuse, so this is what you're going to see. I mean, basically, it puts the texture on the plane and you could see the texture. So this whole 3D model that we are seeing in here right now, like all of them basically, are just these images. And as you can see, it's only 16 frames. So it, I mean, it shouldn't be enough to implement a 3D model, right? That's what, that was the first idea, like, come on, I, I, should, I should have seen that this is just an image sequence, basically. But yet, it's, I mean, you can't really see that. They look so smooth when I move the mouse. It's like I get not 16 directions of angle, but like, I mean, all of them. <laughs> and this is the coolest part. So, yeah. Uh, let's uh, let's see how it, this is actually built. First of all, I'm gonna uh, put the texture in. Then I need to get the texture frame by frame, the mouse interaction, and then we finally get uh, the uh, 3D part. And then I hope I'll, I'll manage to show you how you create uh, the transition that's happening on these textures, right? On these images, 3D objects right now, because you could see that uh, they are changing each other with this pixelated, nice, super nice transition. Uh, I mean, that image is just, just an image, basically. It's, it's 
I would say more. This is even like a PNG uh, that has been converted to the KTX2 format. And the benefit of the KTX format, the main one in this case, being that it's already like uh, it's ready for the GPU. It it should it like there's no uh, time to be wasted unpacking this texture, which is the case for the PNG, JPEGs, and all the and the rest of them. This is GPU format for the textures, but these are just an images. I mean, otherwise it's just like a transparent PNG. And by the way, just so you know, like this thing is actually enormous, like seven megabytes, right? I mean, pretty models usually uh, um, kind of like that, right? But with this quality, I don't think you can get away with seven max uh, for this particular object. Like, and you would definitely need the HDR or something like that and some more and more stuff and maybe more computation. Anyway, so even though it looks big, like 7 megabyte image, but I mean, it works in the end, right? This is the result. So they succeeded. All right. So let's dig into this pipeline, how this is really implemented. All right. I'm going to go in here. I'm going to go to 3JS. ATX loader and let's get this uh, loader. That's the loader I need. I don't need to initialize it. Okay, let's remove this, make the text bigger. I think I, I, I'd rather have more code on the screen, right? And then the more browser thing. Okay. I will also copy all of those textures. Like there are four textures actually, but let's see why we need four of them. Really? Maybe we just can get away with one of them. So these four are all about the Game Boy. And let's dig into these textures and see how they can help us. So poof, poof, poof. What's next? We have to set this transcoder path and then we can uh, finally use it. So this one, these textures are called the basis format. I mean, they are packed with the KTX2, but this is uh, the basis format usually used in there, uh, right? And uh, in the same way that I set the decoder in here, I believe I should set it there too. So it's gonna be like this. And should be this render. Uh, right, and I have to run all of this, right? Uh, Come on, what are the other options? Mm. Should it be enough? I think I, I, I actually had the package JSON in there. Anyway, npx uh, white. Now let's get going. Uh, no, oh no, something weird happened. I just wanted to to move it here, right. So right now I don't get to see anything and this is because the KTX loader is not defined. This is because I'm importing uh, just the KTX2 loader. So I don't like, have the three KTX loader. Where do I get it? Right, now it's all good. And now the next thing I need to do the import the textures. So I have it, I have it. <clears throat> let's get the diffuse. Import T diffuse from and this one. And I'm going to import the URL. So now uh, when I have this, uh, uh, I have material kind of in. Okay, I'm going to remove, I don't need the lights. This is the only thing that I need. And here I'm going to put the UD fuse, which is now. Then I'm going to get back to the 3GS uh, dock. 
And in here I'm gonna load it. I don't need all of these callbacks, I think. This is gonna be T in diffuse URL. And here I should be getting the texture. So I'm just gonna this material uniforms u diffuse equals texture. Right. Should be fine. Okay, I'm just so I'm like everything works as expected. KTX loader. Obviously, this should be just the basis loader. This basis loader. Right, so it seems to be working. I uh, have to have this U diffuse, so I'm going to go to fragment shader, U diffuse, color, uh, let's call this one diffuse. Let's set it and let's remove this annoying alert. Yeah, so, well, this works, right? So we just loaded this basis texture. This is also a nice, uh, <coughs> just a, like, a, just a hint. This is a nice way to pack your textures for the GPU rendering. If you don't really need them, like, in anywhere in HTML, you might as well pack them into the KTX format and into the basis format, basically. And it's going to work faster for you <coughs> and even save you some bytes as well. All right. Uh, Right, so far no question. So first of all, I'm gonna need uh, to get some kind of su sub UVs, I believe, here. So I will need to mm, get some additional UV out of all of it. So I believe I'm gonna just try to write this function. I mean, usually, mm, uh, let's first try to experiment. Sub UV equals uh, what? U uv divided by four here and then uh, let's try to get this diffuse but with this sub uv uh what the hell happened oh it's not plot obviously it's two-dimensional right so I mean, if you just divide this thing by four, you get what you need. And then if I just uh, like add something like this one divided like 0.25 uh, and let's say something weird like this, we should get the half of the next frame, right? So if we keep adding like one divided by four, we basically can run through all the frames. So um, first of all, I'm, I'm, I'm going to also need the mouse position here. U mouse, which is now by default, and then this at mouse events. Uh, uh, should I add it to the body or the canvas? I don't know. So, uh, is this what I need? Keep forgetting all those default APIs. So yeah, it's zero on the left, one on the le on the right. Yeah, this is what I need. So I'm just gonna set this one. Uh, materials uniforms you nows. Now it's it's so weird how Copilot reads even my uh, like typos. So probably I made a typo in the material uniform. I called it you nows, and it it remembered that I called it you nows and used the you nows here. Right? How weird and cool is that? So it really is in the context of what I'm writing here. I mean, it even scares me a little bit. All right. Hello to Australia. Oh, nice. By the way, guys, let me know where you're from. It's, it is always, it, like, it always flatters me and always inspires me to know, like, how many different cool people around the world are watching this video. All right. <clears throat> uh, sorry, still, I got a little sore throat. All right, so uh, I want to uh, create those sub UVs. I have the mouse, just so I like check that I have this mouse in here. I'm gotta move fast. Mm. Yeah, so this works. Right now I'm basically setting the opacity in here. I can also call my material transparent, just so I don't get this whitish background. Basically, this is enough. So now we kind of have a th 3D model, right, uh, from the website. Hello to Malaysia. Right. Okay. 
we have the mouse. Uh, now, judging from the mouse and that we have 16 frames, I'd like to have some kind of index. So float index is going to be what? Well, it's going to be mix between 1 and 15 and the U mouse. So this value we're going to get me something, the number of the frame. Now, knowing the number of the frame, I want to know like the shift inside my UVs that I need to do to get the correct frame in here. So ideally, I want to move my mouse and the object will be rotating on the screen. And let's uh, uh, get sub UV. So what we need here is, a, okay, okay, is Copilot just basically nail it that one i don't know but yeah uh, you can see that guys right i haven't planned that i wanted to write these uh, parts on my own it divided the uvs just as i need to do right it also added those shifts so well let's try that what the hell so sub uv is going to be equal get sub uv from the index Right, and in here I can use this sub UV. I don't really need this debug version. So ideally I would get, uh, well, it's not quite, not quite what I needed. And why is that? It's a little weird. I think I'd rather write it myself in the end, right? Because <laughs> I, I, I roughly remember how it should go. All right. So first of all, um, I'm going to get my index uh, as a um, fractional thing, right? And it's going to be the index divided by four. So I'm going to use this index to add and subtract thing. And I think it also depends like which direction are you going like either you go in the rows or the you know, the columns inside this grid so let's uh let's try to write this down basically it's the same thing that i already mentioned but just a slightly different code so uh uv1 is going to be uv divided by four right this is what i need uh uh, the next thing is that UV1, I will need to, I think they kind of inverted uh, the thing. So here I need to like 3 divided by uh, divided by 4. So I need to move to the end of the UV. And this is going to be for the Y. Because it, it, the UVs are inverted in the sense of the index that I will be calculating from that grid, right? Then the UVX is, is going to be a plus this offset that I need. Plus equals lower of... Um, this is basically the same as the... Um, as the modulo, but uh, I'm I'm, I'm multiplying fractioning and taking the floor out of it, and divide it by four. Yeah, this seems right. And then I need to do this the shift for the y. And this is going to be minus because we need to go in the other direction. And in here is going to be floor, and then also the fractional part, but divided by four, right? Hmm. It's correct. Fraction of the index divided by four. And uh, I mean, not divided, but also multiplied by four, right? So it's going to be like this divided by four, but then multiplied by four. And then all of this divided by four. I know it sounds confusing, like there are basically three fours here, uh, one by one. But this should, uh, it's going to be all of the UV1s and should get me the UV1 thing. So this is get sub UV and I'm getting the index. All right. So it actually 
it actually works yeah so basically it's kind of the same thing except it's moving in a different direction and it's moving step by step hence those like fro and fro floors and fracts so i don't get in between the frames because the copilot i think he made it that i'm just going like line by line smoothly and what i wanted is to go in like steps in steps and this is it i think you can achieve this with same uh, same modular but i didn't want to get uh, confused too much in here all right so i think this works i'm gonna remove the mouse in here i'm gonna move the camera a little bit closer <clears throat> Why you might say that we are kind of close to what we need, but I mean, maybe even closer. Right, so this is what you get. But if you zoom here, it's easy to get uh, like that this is actually a sequence because you move the mouse, nothing changes, then boom, you have the next frame, boom, you have an next frame. It would be obvious, and it's not really like that on the Buttermax website. Spoiler alert. So this one would be obvious. You could like, just uh, focus on any like minor detail, and you can it, it's immediately immediate giveaway that this is a frame. Like it's still, and then it's still, and then it's still frame again. Right. Oh, hello to Congo as well. So we only need someone from the Americas, and then we fully covered the whole globe. At least uh, uh, this thing. The equator. Right. So how to get this? Now we have to mm, pay attention what the other textures are, actually. So there are four textures: the data texture, diffuse texture, MV texture, and then the position texture. So let's see what's uh, in there. So let's see the position texture, which is going to be a uh, position. It's called the T. MV texture, which is going to be uh, just the MV texture, right? This was the name. And then there's also a uh, data texture. All right. Four textures is all we need. So let's. Uh, mm, what's wrong with that one? Don't we have the position one? Uh, Game Boy. Position high EMG. Oh yeah, I, I still left the diffuse in here. And I think it has to be the underscore here, right? They have the underscore in the names. Yeah. Right. Should be fine now. No, not. Maybe I should just restart the server. Game Boy position. Okay, there's a high in, in there as well. Oh, come on, I should have just copied it. Right, all fine. So uh, let's load all the rest of the textures, basically. I'm just going to copy paste this code. In the real world, you probably want something like... Um, Promise all or something like that. So I want to use the U data. I'm going to set the U data. I'm going to have the T position and I'm going to set the U position. I'm going to have the T, uh, what's called it? It's called, it's, I think it's motion. So it's going to be U motion. But I called it TMV, but I think uh, they, called, <coughs> they called it one motion. So now I need to like do all of those. U position, U motion, U data. Right, this is what I did. U data, U position, U motion. Uh, seems correct. Uh, I believe everything is loading. Now I have all of those textures in here. I have the sub UV. I could also, uh, okay, uh, let's first U motion. Gotta move faster. U position. U data, right? Got all of them here. So now, since I have this uh, sub UV, uh, like the first idea actually to smooth this 3D movement would be to uh, to mix uh, next frame with the prior frame, right? Because we have the U mouse, it's actually like smoothly changing between zero and one. 
but uh, we are taking only like 16 steps right now from this mouse so we can get like sub uv next which is going to be index plus one in here and we can now get like the next uh well the next diffuse which is going to be sub uv next we can also get uh the blend parameter so called so uh plot blend is going to be just the fract of the index so this so i mean we get the number of the frame let's say it's going to be fifth and the sixth frame but then we also get the information of how close are we to the fifth and how close are we to the sixth frame so we can blend them in with a mixed texture with a mixed function so and we can make something like fin final it's going to be mix yeah diffuse diffuse next and then and then hopefully at this point in my life i thought well maybe that's the trick like you just mix uh, the frames between each other because these are shaders and textures and you can and you have them basically in one texture already so this should work this should make it smooth well uh, the idea is it did not i mean it definitely makes it more smoother but you can still see like this next frame coming in right so this is what blending does it smoothly uh, morphs into the next frame right now so this sequence it's better, definitely better, but not yet 3D. It's especially uh, uh, prominent, like in the small details, like you could see in some objects that are moving, that like mm, that are travel in some distance during this uh, like transition, and you could see like you could see two borders at the same time, especially here. You could see, we can see it's basically traveling through my screen right so this is not uh, the way that it has been built there is more to it but let's uh let's dig into those textures first of all this is diffuse right we took it with the sub uvs but there are other textures that we just imported into this uh, whole animation so let's see t data maybe it will help us it's going to be sub uv t data and let's output the t data so T data is basically just a mask for the video because uh, all of this time, all during the all the animation, there's a video running on the screen of each device. So uh, now we know what this is needed for. So let's continue our investigation. We have the T and data. We also have the T position. Let's look at the T position. Looks like this. It's not even. I mean. It's hard to like understand what it does, but I think it's uh, just the world position kind of thing of this one because you can do uh, something like this, uh, let's say, and get the T position Z, and just one, and you'll be seeing like a depth, uh, kind of a depth for this device but this depth i don't think it's even uh, it's in a view space it's mostly like in a device space i guess right because the depth or maybe not maybe it's in the world space yeah i mean uh, the the bright thing is at the bottom and it's basically closer to us than the rest of it and then the dark thing is on the so i think this is the position of the device baked into the texture in the world space why we need it just a little bit time we're gonna find out why we need it and then uh, we also have the motion t motion u motion which is absolutely not clear what it is at least it was for me at the start this is how the t motion looks like i mean uh the Things to notice here is that we only using the two channels of the image, only red and green. Don't really using the blue one, but then uh, so it means that we are we are only getting two values out of this texture. And I think it's uh, it's probably the smallest one, right? The MV. I mean, two megabytes. Still something, right? <coughs> so here we go. We got these four textures and we're still uh, not quite there because uh, I will remind you that we only have this. And it's not quite 3D because of these uh, like weird transitions. So let's fix it. First of all, I'm going to uh, introduce uh, another function. I'm going to call this one uh, the, get, uh, the get map. Just so I don't need to 
do all of those calculations between the first frame, next frame, and then blending them in, because I will need to do this for all of the textures. I'm going to just use uh, the, uh, first of all, it's going to be uh, the texture. It's going to be the texture map. Then it's going to be uh, the UV, but I need two UVs, right? I need the next UVs and the previous UVs. So it's going to be, I also need the blend. Yeah. I also need the, uh, yeah, UV, UV next. And I guess that is, yeah. So I'm getting the diffuse. I get the diffuse of the next frame. And I'm just returning the blend uh, between both of them. Right? Or is it not right? Yeah, I think that's, this is it, right? So here, instead of fin, I can just do the uh, UD fuse, blend, sub UV, sub UV next. I don't really need all of uh, all of the rest, I guess. I don't even need the diffuse things. So I need to sample. I need to calculate first uh, the UVs for the previous and the next frame. Then I need to sample all of the things. I don't even need to sample the diffuse uh, like separately because it will be sampled in this get map thing. All right, let's see. Yeah, so this works. So pretty much this function gets me uh, what I need. And if, if I say, like, say I need T position here, I mean, U position. I mean, uh, 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 as you already like understand that all of this is built with textures, I think one of the reasons is you avoid post-processing completely with this approach. The other one is, uh, I mean, uh, the quality of these models would be relatively the same size, basically. But with textures, it's actually much easier to handle on the GPU if you just use textures. So I think there are a bunch of reasons. And you get like more FPS in the end because you're just rendering textures, nothing else. I mean, those are heavy textures, but just textures. I mean, uh, yeah, so I think the main reason I would call is the quality of the models, like the quality of the rendering that you see here would be quite hard to achieve with just the baked textures. I'm not sure. Maybe, I mean, uh, it wasn't my decision in, in the end, right? I'm just trying to justify it. This is my uh, guess. This is my idea why it happened. All right. Uh, so let's uh, figure out the final step, like why and how to make this thing, how to make this thing works. So I need to calculate displacement based on this motion texture. So basically this motion texture describes the difference between all of those frames and let us actually like move it to the next level of the quality. So uh, uh, now that we have the UV and uh, sub UV, so I'm going to calculate the displacement as um, how do we do this? I will uh, introduce another variable, U displacement. Great. I will need the progress a little bit later as well, but let's say we have something like this. So we have two variables right now with which we can change, which does nothing because I don't even have the uniform. All right. So the idea is that this texture should describe the difference. Get let's let's create the function for this one. Uh, I need uh, I think two textures to get this displacement. Maybe just one texture, right? Because I need the current displacement and the next displacement. Yeah. So it's going to be sampler uh, 2D uh, map. Then I need the UV. And I don't really need the UV next, right? Okay. And then I need uh, like some static coefficient, I believe, the strength. strength. So here I will uh, first... Uh, get this, I will convert it to two-dimensional vector, 
Mm, I will normalize it then, multiply it with my <laughs> strength. Strength. Right, and return this two dimensional vector. So this is should be fine, right? Yeah. So this one is going to be uh, get it from the U motion. I'm gonna get it from the U motion sub UV displacement strength. This one is going to be sub UV uh, next. Next. So this way we kind of got those uh, things. Let's just output them for for a second just to see what this actually does. Uh, displacement should be working, right? U motion. U motion is the uniform, right? Displacement strength, maybe because it's it's pretty small. Because I I just. Yeah, so we got some kind of displacement here, and because it's normalized, I believe it's hard to see because it's between minus one and one, and we only see the positive values. Because at the at the top, I think uh, there are like uh, oh no, no 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 not this, uh, and at the top, if I just remove the normalization for a second. Yeah, so this is kind of what we get in terms of values. But if I normalize it between like minus one and one, we get this. Now, uh, I want to use these displacements when I sample, uh, when I use in my get map in here. So in here, I'm going to use the displacement and displacement next. And now in here, I'm going to use the plot. No, not here, not really here. When I combine my two frames, I'm going to use this displacement and displacement next. And in here, I'm going to be displacing my textures, but in a way to merge those two frames together. So it's going to be minus uh, displacement multiplied with blend. And in here is going to be plus displacement one minus blend so kind of we merging uh, frame one into another with the corresponding displacements so this texture uh, t motion describes in which direction uh, the object is moving in each frame and based on that we can predict the next frame and distort the frame in a way that it kind of merges into the next frame but let's see this is the idea at least right so uh, now that we have uh, this for the get map, I can diffuse here. And now I can increase displacement strength. And it's starting to just re be really, really weird. But the idea here, this is displacement strength should be really, really small. You could see and get in there. So this is why I want it to be really, really, really small. So this, uh, you have to guess this value. Don't quite remember what was it was, but what was it? But once you do that, the frames start to, like, basically merge into one another. It has to be really small. So what it does, like, it it distorts the frame in the direction of uh, of the movement. Like right now, I can't really. I don't understand why it's not uh, it's not doing what I want. Pretty complicated things happening in here, to be honest. So is this am I doing everything right in here? Minus Displacement and displacement next. Let's 
seems right, yet something is uh, a little bit wrong here. So I'm taking the RG. Uh, this RG between 0 and 1. I'm normalizing to between minus 1 and 1. Multiplying it with strength. Should be, it should be correct. And until you guess uh, this value exactly, it's, it's just not... It, it will look weird. Like it will, it will still have these interframes in between. And I believe this value should have been baked in between. Uh, like, I'm not sure why I have the vertical movement in here. It should be... Because right now my texture is kind of moving vertically, which they should not be with my displacement strength. I'm not sure why this is happening. Ah, so close. Well, the idea is here. The math is not here yet. <laughs> we get displacement, we get the displacement, displacement strength. Um, why did I make a mistake? Something stupid. Okay, the strength, the energy, RGB, the first two channels I'm taking. Yeah, this is correct. Mm, the sub UVs. Maybe it should be even smaller than that. Okay, hello to Tijuana. Hola. Uh, I mean, it looks so nice once you nail it, it's basically seamless. But for some reason, I can't, I can't just nail this exact value. So it's just like a hard-coded value for this specific texture. Right, maybe I shouldn't just do that and continue to transition, but I just want it to be so perfect. So right now, we still see those interframes, right? And it's because uh, the default value of the displacement strength is zero, once I do it really big, we get this. But this should be horizontal. For some reason, uh, the texture is moving vertically. And why is that? Should I uh, like remap those? Should I change the direction? Maybe like I don't know. Just an idea. Maybe this is. No, this is much more weirder, right? I don't know, guys. Uh, let me spend another minute trying to understand where, it, where I'm getting wrong with this one. So maybe let's multiply it with something big. Uh, why doesn't it do anything? Let's multiply it with 100. Wait a second. But it should be uh, something should change here, right? Oh yeah, because the the original displacement strength is ah, uh, yeah. So they seem to be moving diagonally, which is probably the case because the pixel it's it's been rotated in the diagonal direction, kind of, and the pixel should be moving. So this is really uh, like amplified uh, movement of all the pixels on this thing. And because it's being rotated that way, the kind of moving, uh, the motion is moving them that way. Right, right. Okay, maybe I'm just not uh, getting the, ve the correct value in here. Should be really tiny. Seems to be wrong, <laughs> completely wrong, but I don't know why. Why the hell it is wrong. 
I actually have uh, these functions that I wrote before the stream. So maybe I just copy like these two specific functions. So we can, uh, let me try that with those. Just so you get to see this seamless thing, right? Okay, let's, I'm just, I'm just going to copy it from the before the stream preparation. I don't know. Maybe I messed up some coefficient or something. Uh, it's getting hard with the live coding. So it's basically the same thing in here, except a bit more functions. So I'm using here the remap function, which is using the C range function, which is using the range function. Okay, so I'm gonna copy paste all of them. And they get sub UV. Basically replace my functions. <coughs> right, so those are all uh, the same thing, except instead of like subtracting and multiplying, I'm using the remap function, which maps something from the different uh, range to another range. And uh, I have the sub UV, which is should be uh, the same, right? All the names should be basically the same, except get sub UV. All right, and with this sub UV, I think this is how it worked. So I need I needed to size also the dimensions UV and the index, right? So now it's the same thing, uh, absolutely the same thing, except we get the same error here. The hell. So with this, it's really prominent. With this, it's not visible at all. And there's some value in between where it's just right. I don't know, guys. I messed it up somewhere. Or maybe just, it's probably some stupid thing, like, I don't know, getting the coefficient right somewhere at some point. Anyway, I just wanted to also create a transition here, so... Maybe I shouldn't be focusing too much on this one. Because the idea is in there. Maybe I, I, I can maybe make it... Like, negative as well. Would it be uh, that it should be negative? I don't know. I don't know. All right, let's make a transition. Uh, I think, I mean, anyway, in my screen, it's even hard to see this difference, but it is there, right? So uh, to make a transition between those two frames, the motion texture is being used. So to, to, to avoid like these uh, blending things between the frames, they're using this motion texture to distort the frame and this makes it so much smoother here. I mean, it's already kind of smooth here, but yeah, it could be even more smoother. Ah, what the hell? So uh, on, the, on my Patreon, I will post the fixed version anyway, so you will uh, be able to enjoy this thing and maybe I'll post the fix on the YouTube as well. But let's also try to create the... transition effect. So the ink cursor effect is created with the fluid simulation. I will not be doing this because the fluid simulation is a thing on itself. It has like six shaders and you simulate the water, the fluid, and then you just output it as a, some simplified texture on your screen like this. But this is the full-blown fluid simulation. Maybe the resolution is low for this fluid simulation, but it is done like that. So the, the last thing I wanted to do is to implement this transition between uh, the frames in here. So <laughs> what you see is uh, one of the devices is disappearing and the other one is appearing. And with the pixelized, uh, stylized, nice effect, you just saw this one. I also have this effect while you move the mouse. So let's uh, create uh, this effect. Ah, 
still bother that it's not perfect <laughs> perfect seamless fit with with that one but eh, what the hell so let's create the pixelation effect pixelation i'm gonna call this one so first of all i'm gonna put the number of pixels in here let's say it's gonna be 40 and then uh, i will need uh, to to create those pixels right in here uh how do i do this so i'm gonna create two uvs sub uv uh, one is going to be the uh floor of sub uv multiplied by pixelation divided by pixelation sub uv2 uh, which is next mm, it's going to be the same thing but with the sub uv next and this one i'm going to go with the sub uv uh, so with these ones i can already kind of get uh, get the map here so for color get map it's going to be sub uv one it's all going to be one 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 and let's output the color. Right, so now we have some <laughs> we have some pixels. I mean, this is the object that we have on the screen. It's just pixelized effect, maybe more pixels. So this is how you get the pixelized effect by basically <laughs> multiplying UVs and lowering them and then dividing them by the same value. Uh, okay, but what I want to do, I want uh, my UVs uh, to kind of uh, be mixed with some, so it should be happening as a transition from the bottom to the top. But this, I would uh, need uh, some kind of transitional value. And let's implement this transitional value uh, right here. So it's going to be called like trans transition, let's say. And usually it is the best idea to start with something like this. Then in here, because I already have this T position, uh, I can just, I mean, uh, position is going to be the get map between uh, from the U position, blend, sub UV. Yeah, so this is going to be the position in 3D. 3D in my 3D and yeah so I can now use this transition in here it's going to be position Y and then uh, because I already have the U progress in here so I can try to uh, use this U progress in here mm. because I want it to be from the bottom to the top multiplied by progress and let's output this thing in here. Uh, what the hell? Don't I have the progress? Right now, so we, we got the basic progress. It's, st it, I mean, the black and white are, are the progress of the transition. So right now I'm kind of hiding the uh, the image. Uh, the black comes from the bottom. Now I want to make it more complicated, and I can make it more complicated by using the sine curve or maybe noise or the sine curve. So I'm gonna go in here and also add uh, some more complicated value because we're a bit out of time. I'm gonna use here the position x. I'm gonna write it down the same way that the guys did it. Multiply it by four plus uh, progress multiplied by let's say six any big value will do in in this case so the, in, this is means that the sine curve will be moving while we have a transition and it will be dependent on the x coordinate right and also to to make it not as big as it should be I'm gonna do a little bit of the math on the horizontal plane and then also make it smooth and and hide it a little so this should do something let's see 
see that we have this kind of a sine curve transition. I mean, it's not it, it's not uh, the transition happens from zero to one for the whole texture, but we also have. I, I think I can also add a time in here. Yeah, right. If I may, may move it slower, you can see that the sign is actually moving there. Or maybe I can just multiply it with some big value. So while the transition is happening, the sign curve will be moving through this whole thing. There's not a big deal in here, just uh, basically throw in some signs, or maybe this could be achieved with a noise function. I just want it to be like, close to the original animation. So uh, now that I have this transition, I can play with it to create my pixelized effect. So mm, I want uh, to create another variable to mix in between uh, my UVs in here. So I have the pixelation UVs, uh, UV1 and sub UV next to one, which are the pixelation UVs, as we already know. Here's my pixels. And now I kind of want to mix the original UVs with the pixelated UVs in the way this transition works. All right. To do this, I will calculate uh, some kind of uh, mix for UVs. It's going to be... Uh, should be going the other way. 1 minus transition. And... What else? I think it was multiplied with also big value and the progress itself. And then I can try to mix uh, my UVs in here. So instead of using the sub UV just as the UVs, I can do mix in here and mix uh, the default UVs. So this one will be mixed with sub UVs with this uh, mix for UVs thing. And this the same way. So I'm mixing two sets of UVs based on this value. And this mix for UVs, we can just output it as well. So this is where it will happen. It will happen. <coughs> it will happen from the bottom to the to the top. And this means that we will all be only be seeing the pixelized effect. This is all for the pixelized effect coming from the bottom to the top. This is why we revert this thing and make it more harsh by multiplying it. This is the reason. All right. Also, at the bottom, it's more uh, big gradient. And the top, it's like more harsh. So it finishes up. All right. So we have the uh, two sets of UVs for the pixelized thing right now. So I think I can, I can just output the color right now. I kind of want to uh, also set the uh, T motion uh, back for default equals get map diffuse and use uh, the uh, G The opacity from the original thing, yeah. So now we have the pixelized effect coming from the bottom to the top, and it's kind of fine. I guess pixels could be smaller. Also, I think 69 was too much. So now we get this pixelized effect by basically mixing the UVs, the pixelized UVs with non-pixelized UVs on a different thing. Also, the UVs are being scaled in there, I believe. So uh, uh, what we need to do now, we need to put some colors on the shading transition and we need to add the opacity in here. So um, uh, how do we do this? I think I'm going to leave it in here, but then uh, the color... Uh, the A is going to be uh, V multiplied by this default A, which is uh, uh, trans 
Yeah, let's see. Right, get in there. So there's one one more touch left to add in here. Good morning, nice to see you, Mr. Hillips. So this is how you do this pixelized effect. <laughs> Basically by combining a lot of and this whole thing works actually by even when I'm rotating this thing because each time I'm actually taking this function get map and the guys did that between those two frames just so it works uh, this way. So you can see the sign curve traveling with the time here right now. And what I want to do, uh, the, one of the last things, I wanted to uh, create the rainbow effect. I actually have a small rainbow effect. And for that, I'm just going to copy the RGB functions. And there's a hard coded color in there to use this thing. So I think. Probably don't really matter, but uh, still. So the idea is to convert uh, the RGB color to uh, HSL color, get, get, do some transformation, and then return the color again from the HSV, and then uh, let's output this rainbow in the end. Uh, I'm not seeing the rainbow. Uh, the rainbow is a color. Should be seeing just the color, right? Why am I seeing the image? Is it some kind of cache? Did something crash? Is the white the vid playing games with me? Why do I see the image in here? Oh, because I'm using the color RGB here, but not the uh, what the hell. All right. So basically, right now it's uh, just the color. But what I can do uh, the first is the hue. Could be R, could be X, doesn't really matter. But in this case, because this is a HSL version of the color, this is the hue. So I can uh, rotate the hue based on some some things, right? And uh, because it, it the hue loops, so I think once it gets outside of the zero one range, it just returns to the zero, like a three sixty degrees, and like it should be. So I think uh, that's just some 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 hard coded values to do this uh, like. UV, uh, which is VUV probably, probably just VUV X. Let's see what's gonna happen. So I don't think I had the UVUV, right? Where do I have VUV? Okay, I should be having it. And what is wrong exactly? Ah, yeah, I should multiply. Uh, still does nothing. The hell. Uh, okay. This should be for the HSV. Changing this, converting it back to the rainbow. Yeah. So now we have the rainbow. All right. Maybe this way it will be more prominent. Now we have the rainbow. We can actually a bit rotate it and make it more dependent uh, on the things that we have here. So I already have the transition, so I can add the transition in here. Uh, by default transition is zero, but when we'll be moving, we're going to get this. And because transition is not uh, linear, we're going to get this wave traveling at a different speed here. Also, maybe think multiply the progress. Maybe multiply this one 10 times, I don't know. Does it help? Okay, I think the background now spoils it all, but I don't think we even need this. Now we have this rainbow. Now what I want to do, I want to mix this rainbow into the transition. So, um, have the color, our RGB is going to be mixed between color 
RGB rainbow and then there's something that Copilot tries to tell me. But I can I can, we can just use trans for example, what's gonna happen? Uh, okay, I need to remove uh, this thing. Yeah. Or maybe one minus trans. Right? It's starting to look pretty cool. I mean, uh, probably, maybe it shouldn't be three. Maybe it should like, be smaller. <laughs> yeah, it should be something smaller so we don't really see the whole rainbow in there, right? But something like this looks nice. But then uh, I also want to mix it not really based on the transition, which, which actually also works, by the way. I think it pretty much works. <laughs> But we could mix it based on the transparency of the thing. So we can make, mix it based on the transparency, just like this. And then take... Uh, so <clears throat> we're going to mix it uh, only in the places where we have some kind of transparency then. Let's see what's going to happen now. So it looks as if this rainbow thing is just hiding our object. And of course, we can play with this rainbow just so the, we align it with the proper color. So maybe we can put more colors in there now. But it's already look pretty cool. And I mean, uh, they also use uh, this rainbow, I think, for the mouse effects uh, on the original website. Like when you move in here, you also have some kind of rainbow thing like on the on the videos in the fluid texture done in the same way but also for this effect i believe so uh let's see i mean this is probably it right i think we can maybe multiply this one smaller because the rainbow is not as bright so it kind of hides the screen. It looks so beautiful, and with the pixelized effect, it just just looks amazing. And you can play with the. No, I'm I'm a self taught uh, answering the questions in the chat. Yeah, I mean, uh, this seems like a minor effect, but I love it so much. This adds uh, such such a creative touch. So maybe I'll spend <laughs> another two minutes trying to fix uh, the thing with the pixels. Uh, but otherwise, we are good, I think. This is a pretty cool effect. So, uh, uh, just uh, getting back a bit uh, with the effect, the most important thing is this transitional thing, which, which just sets the black and white curtain to, to hide everything that we see. And then, based on this curtain, we can mm, build multiple effects. Uh, okay, maybe I should... Color A here, be more better, yeah. So if we first set this curtain and then, okay, but because of the color A, now we're hiding <laughs> parts of the black thing as well. Oh my God, okay, yeah, maybe it's better this way. So you could see that the device is being hidden actually. And uh, by the way, uh, see that uh, while we uh, calculated this transition thing, we actually used position Y and position X, which are actually world space coordinates. So this object kind of behaves like a 3D object even during the transition. Because the transition calculation based on the, uh, well, actual 3D space positions of the object, right? Well, that's my guess, at least. That's, I hope they have this in the texture. But you can use UVs in here as well. Maybe you should change a couple of numbers here, but this will work with the UVs too. No, this is a nice transition even for the images. Right. Yeah, so uh, let's uh, step back a little then. And I'm going to try to... to see this transition and this displacement strength. Like, when I did this, uh, for some reason, I haven't seen uh, the images moving in this direction. I don't know... And the value should be also really small. So this is just a tiny, tiny movement between the textures. Okay, maybe there's a minus somewhere. Have to throw the minus, maybe. 
But where? Right, maybe here. Where I calculate the displacement, really. Now this looks wrong. Maybe not. Yeah, so I guess I'll we'll figure out this after the stream. But the idea is, is, is this, yeah. I don't really know, by the way, how they calculated this. So basically you need to have like two 3D objects. And then for each uh, vertex, you need to calculate this difference, like where the vertex is actually moving, so that you can later on like uh, use this as a texture. Because I will remind you, this texture looks like uh, this. So this is like a pretty weird looking thing and should be like customly calculated. Maybe they will post the case study and explain how this happens. I think also... Uh, Olympics. What? So this is how it should be looking, right? It's, this is the one that I implemented before the stream. And this is exactly the same code. I mean, I don't yet know. Uh, I did some stupid mistake, probably some math mathematical mistake. So here, if I said, you see the displacement is set to some real, real small value in here. And if I set it to zero, we will be seeing this like transition between all of those images. If I see to something like something big, this is what we see. And this is a completely different thing, by the way. You see that the textures are basically moving horizontally. I don't know, I, I'm, I messed up somewhere in my calculations there. So if I see set it to something small, to the small value, it starts to be seamless. You don't get to see the transition. Let's like super zoom in. You don't get to see the transition between frames anymore, because basically each pixels know each pixel know where it should be distorted before it comes to the next frame, right? This is what you see. I mean, it's crazy, right? How you do this in this pipeline? Maybe you know uh, somebody somebody watching the stream knows how you create these things, and where where do you even get the idea of something like that? Like making an image sequence and then creating a uh, like the motion distortion, the motion difference part from each frame between the things. But this is it, and this is this is how it works. Yeah, I don't know why I haven't nailed it. I will not spend more time doing that. It's been a long stream already. But you could see how it, I mean, if you really increase the parameter, you could see how it works. Well, judging from what I see here, it's kind of inverted in a way but yeah yeah so it's like winning but for the textures and uh, we basically distort because if you can if you get back in here this is what happens so each texture uvs is being displaced by this by that texture by the motion texture and this is how we get this perfect blend between two frames so when even when we are big between two frames, we don't get to see one and the other. We see the distorted versions of them, which kind of blend in perfectly, which is uh, so, so fucking cool. Yeah. Uh, this is it, I guess. It's been a long one and I hope you liked. And yeah. I will post uh, this code version in, in, in the Patreon, so if you're interested, you can download it. But otherwise, I hope you learned some interesting stuff during this stream. And stay safe and take care, guys. I hope that you'll be safe this week. And say something kind to the people that you love. Don't forget to say them that you love them, because life is fleeting. But otherwise, have fun, and I'm going to be seeing you in the next week. I'm going to stay in the chat a little bit, so if you have any questions, just ask me. Otherwise, see you hopefully in a week if I feel better finally, because as you might have noticed, I'm still uh, a little bit sick.